Hello, and welcome to Claire's World. I am Claire, and today I would like to share with you more of the information I've received from the 25th dimension during my last BQH hypnosis session. I will be reading from a transcript of the session, and when I refer to Lorraine, I'm speaking of my practitioner who's asking me questions I prepared in advance of the session. And when I refer to me, I'm speaking of myself under hypnosis, which means the answers are coming from the 25th. And I was Max in the background. If you heard her, she goes, yay. <laughs> she does love these sessions and she does love when I make the videos. So you might see her come in at some point. At any rate, I'm going to start reading here. But as I promised to this first question, I was in a very emotional state of mind the whole of last summer. And uh, this session was actually from, is from August 10th. And I had just gone through a few weeks where I was, um, really there was a lot of turmoil because I was doing something that I did not enjoy. And I was thinking to myself, why do I still have to do this? Why is 3D reality so low vibe and so lame and all of that? So uh, the first question has to do with me basically saying, okay, this is it. We got to leave. Okay. So I'm intending that this is the timeline and blah, blah, blah. So here is Lorraine asking the question. And then I will share the 25th answer. Lorraine. Okay, did Clay intend to recall this past Monday and that was on July 24th, 2023? And if she did, and she believes she did, why has it not happened? Me. Yeah, so Clea has intended the recall. Of course, we have all intended the recall. Clea did reaffirm her intention, which doesn't need to be reaffirmed. We already said our intention stands at all times, unless we change our mind. Yes, she did intend it, and she did give people time to wrap up. At the same time, Clea's intention, we have intended to work together, as much as Clea hates to think about the fact that she's stuck, and that she may have made this decision when she didn't know any better, <laughs> and they were laughing. And we know this is how you feel as well, Lorraine. It's like, well, we made this decision 300 years ago. Why do we have to stick with it? Because we want to, and because it is important. And again, we want to remind you, not just for other people, quote unquote, there is no other, we all know. Not just because of other people, you know, the slow pokes who are still resisting or however we like to think of them, but also for our own sake, because we already said we do not want to be on new earth by ourselves. We don't. New earth is a completely new experience within the multiverse. We are going to feel completely different. Everything is going to be known to us. And this is going to be traumatic in many ways. It's going to be startling. We already said this. It's going to be fun in many ways. We already said this too. And eventually it's going to be fun all the time. It's going to be beyond fun. It's going to be amazing. But it's also going to be very traumatic for a period of time. We do not, we chose not to do this on our own because while we are going to know everything, there's not going to be a veil. We're also going to be humans. Is still going to be us. We're moving there with our personality of now. And we did not want to be by ourselves, knowing that we are all one, of course. But as you well know, there is a distance between knowing and really knowing. Because we're not going to be our higher selves on your earth. So there's still going to be that perceived distance that we like to think of. Because we're in the matrix and we do want to play the game. The perceived distance between what we know and how we feel about things, because we're feeling from a matrix perspective. So because of that, we are still choosing. We hate it, okay? We're not necessarily happy about still being here. We said this many times. However, in the great scheme of things, we have chosen to go together and we're sticking with that decision because it is important to us. It is important to all of us. And so it's okay. We're taking time to finish what we're doing. And we realize from a 3D perspective, we said it many times, every minute feels like a year, especially at this point, because we are getting so close. So we are so impatient. Kath in the group was just saying yesterday, she's becoming so impatient and we get it. Claire's been impatient for a while. You, Lorraine, have been impatient for a while. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no judgment. There's nothing that you should be doing differently or you should be feeling differently. Whatever you are feeling is what you're supposed to be feeling. And it's exactly how you're supposed to be playing it. 
at the same time, it is unpleasant. We understand that, but it is what it is. This is one of the things, and we'll answer one of Claire's questions here that's going to come up, which is, she was asking, am I just putting myself through this misery because that way, when I got to New Earth, I'm not going to miss this place because it was so crappy. It was such a crappy experience, even in the end where I'm like, oh, I'm so fed up. I'm so glad we left. And unfortunately, no. I mean, certainly this is not why we're doing this, but also no, because we're still going to miss this place, but we are going to have very mixed emotions about it. Of course, that's an understatement. And we're also going to remember these times, especially the end. And we are going to be, it's going to feel very desolate. It's going to feel very, very emotional. We already, we spoke about it in our initial messages. We gave this vision to Claire a few sessions ago where she was walking on new earth and she was thinking back to the last few months here and she was feeling very sad and asking herself, why? I mean, why do we have to go through all of that? And unfortunately, we are living through it. So yes, it is sad and it is difficult. It's extremely challenging what we are doing right now. And just because you are completed doesn't mean that it's easier. It's any easier. In fact, it might even be more challenging. Everybody's dealing with different things. The people who are resisting, they have emotional challenges they're dealing with. You have emotional challenges that you are dealing with. Nobody's really having an easy time of this. We don't want to make it. And we know we never told you that the moment you be completed, you'll be in seventh heaven or on cloud nine, as you like to say. Because these are very challenging things we are doing, which is the reason why it is so worthwhile, of course. We have the saying here that, you know, everything that's worthwhile is going to be challenging. We are definitely living through some really unique times in the history of the multiverse. But yeah, this is why you are going to stay until the end. You have chosen to stay until the end. And you might hate it at a 3D level. Claire hates it. You hate it, Lorraine. Many hate it. Or at least that's what we say at a conscious level. But the fact is, we have chosen, we have decided, and we're not going to change our minds. Lorraine, I think we're nuts. <laughs> and she and the 25th were laughing. <laughs> okay. Edward had a dream about the takedown having started. Has it started? Me. So the takedown started a long time ago. In his dream, it was not necessarily... He thought we were talking about the takedown of the planet itself. But the fact is the takedown, we know this, has been in the works for 300 years. And most of the takedown, most of everything that was involved in the takedown happened last year. The only thing that's left is the takedown of the planet. And the takedown of the planet is going to be immediate. It's not a process. It's not something that's going to take weeks, months. So his dream simply was bringing home the fact that, yes, we are living through the takedown. We are still working. We are in the overtime of the takedown, of course. But of course, we haven't achieved the takedown of the planet yet. But even that, just like the recall, will be immediate when we're ready for it. And so, yes, the takedown, in the sense that the dream was referring to, absolutely has started. It started a while ago. But no, not in the sense of now we are dismantling the planet which is what it almost sounded like in the way that he wrote about the dream and in the way that Claire wrote the question. Again, it's not like a brick building that we're taking down one brick at a time. Now, if you want to look at it metaphorically, in that sense, yes, we have been working at this project for a long time. So we have been taking down one brick after the other, but it's not something that we are starting now in a physical manner, no. But yes, the takedown clearly has started a long time ago and they were chuckling. So in this sense, the dream is correct and Edward is correct, but we just want to say, not because now we're in a new phase of the project where the actual takedown or we are working on the actual takedown for the first time or something. No, not in that sense. Lorraine, thank you. Okay. Someone else in the Telegram group had a dream where they were late for class. It seemed that she is not ready. Who else, meaning how many who are doing this work consciously are not ready and how long is it going to take? Is it fear of new earth? One of the main human parameters we have adopted here is that change is hard. Can we not just move to the energetic of the higher self and be done if we're the only ones here? 
There is no point to this anymore. It's all visibly nonsensical. You told us that the veil would break down more and more before we leave. But what is the point of being here with virtually no veil left for some of us and have to deal with the situation while in the dense energetic environment without having the consciousness and light or energy we will have on your earth? Many of us don't need this reality anymore, but we are stuck here waiting because of a decision to leave together 300 years ago when we didn't know that we would have this overtime, which is more and more dreadful. I was so happy when I realized that the project was completed back in June, but here we are, as if nothing has happened and with no recall in sight. We didn't know there would be a delay between the project being completed and the recall. Please elaborate. And again, as you see, some of the themes are in this question are have been answered by the 25th in the previous question. Again, Lorraine always likes to read a question as it's written, and this has given the 25th the opportunity to add more nuances to an answer. So this has always been a good thing at the end. So here's the 25th. Yeah, so we have already explained this at length. We have answered this at length in the beginning of the session today, and that would be in the first video from this new session. So we don't want, in the interest of time, we'll just summarize here. It is not true that we don't need, quote unquote, want really. We don't want a shell. So the shell, all of us want the shell to remain in place. Now the shell is very riggedy <laughs> and we're laughing at this point. Doesn't really hold all across the board. We're already sad. We don't care enough for the details. All we are looking for is that when we leave the house, we see people so we can pretend. We know, we know they're not real. Claire feels it all the time. She can tell they're empty without even feeling into them. This is something that's obvious to her at all times now, but she still wants the interaction. She still wants to be able to distract herself when she goes out. She wants to be able to drop off her daughter with a bunch of NPCs at school so she can have a little time to herself, for example. So this is okay. We have the ability to do this because again, our brothers and sisters left their bodies behind. So we take advantage of it. And so this is why we want to keep the shell in place as opposed to saying, okay, we're done with the shell. We see the apocalyptic look of the earth now with nobody around. And at that point, obviously we will want to move on, but we want to keep the shell in place because we are not done from an emotional perspective. We are not ready to go in terms of of course, we are ready, we are eager, but we are still finishing up certain things. And because of that, the shell is convenient to us. It just makes it easier to deal with certain things. Now, of course, Clea's mind is going through again saying it's because of the shell that some of us are able to put up resistance when they are able to pretend that, no, there are no NPCs. This is still their loved ones. So we kind of have a chicken and egg kind of situation. That's what Clea is thinking. But that's okay, because the fact is that even these people, they know, even these people who are fighting so hard, that's why they're fighting so hard to resist, because they already know. And so we will talk, we're referring specifically to this person, she already knows. And this is somebody who was in this community from the beginning, and then at some point, she reached a point where she started putting up a lot of resistance and basically deciding on a different view of reality because she couldn't handle, she could not handle the idea that her loved ones are gone. And so the 21st, I was referring to her just as an example, not that she's doing anything wrong or anything that we are not doing. We are all pretending that everybody's still here. So this is, again, there is no judgment on any of this. So this we are doing what we need to be doing. So, uh, so, they're saying she already knows. This is why she's making up all these stories because not only she knows at a higher self level, of course, that's a moot point. She actually consciously knows and she doesn't want to believe it. She already knows in her mind. She's aware of NPCs and she knows that her loved ones are NPCs. She had no problem when it came to her husband, but she really ran into a wall when it came to her sister, her children. But she knows, and that is why she's so emotional, not because she doesn't know consciously. And so she's thinking to herself, she's telling herself all the time, I'll repeat. You know how we talk about repetitive thoughts. She's telling herself all the time, I'll repeat. No, 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 that's not true. No, 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 that's crazy. No, 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 I can't. No, it's coming from an evil source who put this thought in my head. I need to just let it go. This is not true. Look, I'm talking with my daughter right now. 
she knows. And so this is not going to last much longer because eventually she's going to have to give up because the fact is, while it is very sad, of course, what she's doing is much sadder. She's much more emotional because of what she's doing because she's fighting herself. We've said before, this is not Clea that gave her the information. This is her higher self that gave her information. Clea was just a trigger. Clea's channel was a trigger. We said the channel didn't even have to exist. She would have known exactly the same things. With a difference that now she wouldn't have an excuse to say, oh, Clea is being fed by, by low vibe entities and they were laughing here. This is an intelligent person, even a 3D we're talking about. So once she knows, which she does, she knew from the beginning. That's why she aligned. We said a million times, if you found this channel, it's because you were already aligned. You chose to know this information. If you hadn't gotten it this way, you would have gotten it in a different way. But you would have still gotten exactly the same information because no one can force you to absorb anything. There are trillions, gazillions pieces of information on this planet. And we're only exposed to a handful because that's all we choose for our experience. You, Lorraine, specifically, for example, have gone through a long evolution in this lifetime when it came to spirituality. You would have been perfectly happy continuing what you were doing. Why did you run into this? You see, there is nothing that anyone from the outside can do to you to make you do anything. We know this. We know this. Your higher self will align with what it wants to experience. So this person's higher self has aligned her because she wanted to know. And she knows now. She knows it consciously. And she's regretting knowing it. She's regretting. She's fighting because she says, well, I don't like this information. And meanwhile, she's saying that we are sad, that we aren't happy. But she really, truly, if you had to compare, she's much less happy than anybody else because she knows and she's telling herself, I don't want to know. I can't. This is not right. I cannot go along with this. And she's fighting it because she's that emotional. So we don't know how long this is going to take, but this wrapping up. We don't know how long this resistance is going to continue, but eventually something will break because Clea made the example earlier when you guys were talking about this. How long does it take to get over a breakup or maybe somebody passing away? Some people will get over it in a month and some people might take three years to get over it. We're not saying this is going to take three years. But we are saying we have different personalities, which is the whole point. This is what makes this game fun, that we're not all the same at MTC level. But you see, this process has already been going on with this person for a while. We have been receiving, which means we have been, even before Clea started the channel in December 2021, Clea had been receiving this information since August 2021. We already said there were other people that were receiving. There was a handful of other people that were receiving it on this planet. What does that mean? That the information has been percolating since then. The information has been available within the matrix since then, which means this person, just like the rest of us, we already were working on it. Even if you had never met Clea, even if you had never heard of this information from Clea, you would know today what you know now. An example of this is this gentleman that has joined the group recently, and we didn't say his real name in the previous session, so we will not use his real name. Clea called him Bob, and the reason we bring him up is because he only found the channel recently, but he was asking, am I insane? I'm seeing, I know that people are not, nothing feels right. And he was asking all these questions. How did he know? How did he know? He just found the channel. So he's been doing this work on his own for a year and a half since Clea started spreading this information. How did he know? Because we were already sad. The information has percolated. Your higher self wants you to have it. Your higher self decided you were going to have this information. There is no getting around it. You can fight it all you want, but there's no getting around it. Clea could shut down our channel and you're still going to know exactly everything that's going on, even if Clea doesn't tell you. We already said a million times, you go inside and you know exactly what's going on. This is not Clea telling you, and therefore you have to believe. And they were laughing. Clea has never wanted to persuade anybody of anything. She couldn't. Even if she wanted to, she couldn't. Our higher self will decide in every single moment what our experience is going to be. So this person's higher self is doing the work that needs to be done. And guess what? There is no escaping it.
Because while we have said that the higher self is fun picking the personality of the NPC, it's one of the many traits of the NPC that the higher self chooses to have a certain experience. The experience that the higher self has chosen in this case is to have conscious awareness of what's going on, to receive this information once it was available. There is nothing that the NPC can do to refuse it. You can delay it, you can be emotional about it, but there is nothing you can do about it. The higher self works through whatever it's working with, the NPC. The higher self knew that this would be available. The higher self chose. The higher self of this person chose to participate in this overtime project, knowing it would get to where we need to get to, to have this conscious awareness. There are no two ways about it. The higher self decides everything. So we don't need to worry. Claire's worried about timing. Oh, but how long is it going to take? It could take 30 years to get over a divorce. Who knows? It's not going to take 30 years. We already said. And the fact is, what we're saying is, because Claire used to think, oh, how long is it going to take for this person to realize? This person already knows. This person knew from the beginning. She had no problem talking about NPCs before. And the reason when it became a problem is because she realized she goes, crap, they're gone too. She already knew. That's why Claire said nothing. Claire knows. So it's not, we're saying this to allay your concerns, yours as well, Lorraine, not just in terms of this person, but also in terms of just everything that's going on out there with the fact that we do feel stuck. We're still here. We're waiting for people. These people we are waiting for, they all know exactly at a conscious level. They know what's going on. It's just that they're still fighting it, but they already know. And this is what we mean about we do know, even consciously, the project has been completed of consciously knowing we create everything. So there is nothing to worry about and everything is just fine. I hope you guys enjoyed this part of the session. It truly did make a difference for me. I always felt like, well, what's the point? We are the ones who are aware of being completed and we feel stuck here. Whereas these other people are just resisting, meaning they don't know that the project is completed. They have not integrated this knowledge and therefore they're having a good time. <laughs> and of course, nobody's having a good time, not on this planet, even though we've changed the polarity. So, but just in relation to the fact that we are here and we're thinking we're stuck. And then with this answer, the 25th basically clarified for me that they also know exactly what's going on at a conscious level. And the difference is that between us and them, and there is no us and them, obviously, we're talking in separation terms here as if they were real, but uh, between us and them, if anything, in these terms, the difference is simply that they know what we know, and they're saying, no, but they cannot be. And they're doing this because they are so emotional. And we are all emotional. There is no difference. At the end of the day, we are one. Uh, the way that we see a different personality deal with this information is the way that all of us deal and have dealt with this information. We just might have different personalities. That's why the 25th keeps on saying that this is why we're not moving on to New York by ourselves or in small groups, because we are all that emotional. And we will be even more emotional when we realize the full extent what has transpired here so i completely do understand that as impatient as i am because i'm still impatient but at the same time i completely understand uh what is happening and i do feel for all of us and obviously for our brothers and sisters because this is not easy what we're doing right now but we are doing amazing things and i am very proud of us all right i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you as always for watching take care